example. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Helen. That was uh, helpful to um, remind us all wh why we all did this, these studies. I'm Harro von Lenz. I'm Professor of Science and Technology Studies at Maastricht University and one of the researchers in this uh, consortium. And the research I will report on today is uh, starting from this very uh, commonsensical idea that when you are concerned about responsible research and innovation at open science, it probably matters what kind of sector you're working in or are concerned about, and also the, the, the country you're working in. So things are different in, in different places and in different disciplines, in different economic sectors. So let's have a look at that. So <clears throat> the key questions uh, in the research I will report on is are twofold. One is how can we see the different uh, variations across sectors, national contexts, and maybe also other factors that matter in terms of uh, variation because responsible research innovation is not just one monolithic um, uh, movement. It comes in various forms and with various questions, with various ambitions. So let's have a look at that. It's very useful to know that before you start doing experiments and uh, developing tools. So that's one thing. The other thing, second question, is to provide a bit of a background. Can we understand these variations and what factors help, help in, in shaping the variations? So these are the two questions. And in this research, we build on some shared ground that is um, that we covered in the whole Fit for RRI project, which is this. These are these five analytical interests um, that we are interested in the general trends and uh, also the first webinar on uh, the dynamics in science systems was focusing on this. So we contribute to that as well. The, question what is happening um, in the different uh, disciplinary and research sectors. Secondly, these barriers. So can we understand what withheld, withheld people from uh, joining RRI or to discuss it and what kind of institutional opportunities are there to address it better? Um, the drivers. So how do these concerns come in, in play? How do they uh, steer the developments and the discussions and what differences do we see there? Fourthly, uh, the interests and values. So there are dif typically different values at play when you are discussing say biotechnology or ICT. So let's have a look, what, what is at play there? And finally, um, so do we know of some good examples of um, where experience, we have successful experiences um, that could be a model or a benchmark for other uh, attempts. Okay, so that is a sort of general introduction why we do this and how we, we see it. So then I will focus now on the sectors that we feel were important to explore. So we decided that at the beginning of the project. The first sector is um, sustainable energy with and that's of course a very broad category so we focused uh, if possible uh, on uh, zero emission innovation in the built environment so zero emission built houses um, that is an attempt that is now going on in various places so it's partly scientific research but also sort of uh, hands-on innovation Secondly, material science, which is a bit more remote from actual innovations, it's more research oriented. Um, although, and we focused here on coatings, there you see also industrial activities on say nano coatings and new coatings that help to improve the performance of materials. Uh, the third sector, ICT, information communication technologies, and uh, that is of course very visible in terms of big data. Um, the fourth one, probably very different, is biotechnology. Again, a very broad category. So we focused here on stem cell research and personalized medicine. Um, we did this in various countries. So not all countries focus on both. So then we have an option to have either of these two. Um, and the last one, uh, photonics. 
where we focused on blast fiber technologies and uh, new light electronic chips. So the enhancement of uh, also data communication, but also additional features and um, uh, performance. So these are five very different sectors where you would expect differences in terms of open science and responsible research. So then how did we do this in, in this research? Uh, actually two steps. Um, step one is going to the literature. We are not the first one exploring this. There have been some uh, thoughts, experiments, uh, experiences. And so we looked for the promises in, in these sectors, the concerns, whether there are reports about societal engagement in these five sectors. And um, that was then uh, ended in month six. Then we continued and to elaborate, deepen, and check these findings in uh, workshops in five countries. So we had uh, researchers in these countries and they all developed their own uh, workshops with the various uh, sectors. And these five countries, you see them on the screen, Norway, Italy, Portugal, Finland, Netherlands, so a nice spread across Europe. And again, we focused here on promises of the field, the concerns about the field and the societal engagement. And uh, yeah, so we really uh, were able to, uh, to, to, to do that and to work according to plan. Uh, it depends a bit on, this, on, the, on the local situation. So sometimes we have to improvise with the timing, but okay, this is what we could achieve. So we ended with a, a, a conclusion. We integrated it and uh, Helene, pointed to the uh, report that are now available. But I will continue with uh, some a bit more how we did the literature review. So uh, I won't go through this all, but just to show you that something like literature review is not just uh, opening a Google Scholar and then you have all the results. It's really you go through it through several rounds and discuss what is important, what is salient, what to select, and how to uh, deepen. So we have in the consortium various rounds of uh, meetings uh, in between reporting and uh, presenting drafts, comments, and so on. Um, also with the workshops, this is a bit more, um, uh, yeah, so, so this is also a bit more, more sensitive that you really do the same things, otherwise it's difficult to compare. So we set together to prepare a format of a workshop. This was done by our Norwegian colleagues. We tested the format and all these five different countries then um, developed the format according to their own uh, possibilities and ambitions. And um, so we shared the information, we commented upon the findings and we also could prepare the end result in, uh, in a report. So um, that is how we did this. Some notes about um, the participants. If you look at all the workshops together in all these five countries, you can see, well, there are quite a few representatives from both research and industry in these five countries and also these five sectors. So um, 43 sounds like a lot, yet if you look in detail, you will also conclude this is not the way to do statistics. These numbers are too low to have significant variations in statistical ways. Yet, it is very useful to, um, well, to have more qualitative insights into the discourse, the arguments, and the concerns that circulate in these various um, groupings. So they are very helpful for the challenges and the chances of RRI and open science in these uh, our FPOs, the research funding and performing organization. So it's, it's, it's a good result. I will present some of the results now. The um, literature review uh, focused on these five sectors and um, what we can say first about sustainable energy, that it's, it's promising, it's, it's quite a long lasting promise already. Uh, sustainability is, is, is discussed for a long time, seen as very, important as responsible also to address it so 
Interestingly, it's almost automatically seen as responsible research if you focus on sustainable energy. Um, so that's hardly contested. And you also see that because it's hardly contested that all the established actors, so the big uh, uh, research groups on, on energy and also the, cons the uh, organizations focusing on building, they really position themselves and they show to the world, look, I am good, I am providing responsible innovation because I am focusing on sustainability. So that is the promise that is there and, and also the, the possibility to position yourself to these promises. So that is a setting that is important to keep in mind if you do uh, responsible research innovation, that there is this promise around and that people really would like to connect to it. The situation is different in the second case of material science, of new coatings, it's hardly a promise. It's societally less visible. It's something nobody really reads about a lot. It's not so much in the news. It is uh, an emergent industry, but yeah, it's mostly research and science. And also we saw that when there is responsible research innovation discussed, it's mostly through research and science policy. And the researchers themselves are much less involved with it. Also, the institutions are much, much less involved. It is something that is more top down because we are concerned about RRI and OS in general, so also in this case. With uh, the third case, ICT, what we found in the literature that again, this is visible societally. Uh, the promise of ICT, but also the concerns. Uh, probably you all know about these discussions about big data, about algorithms, about artificial intelligence. Um, so that is, it's not artificial to discuss it. People see it as natural to do that. So that, it, that helps uh, if you launch the idea of RRI in this sector. Yet, what is also uh, 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 striking in this sector is that it's quite a mature one with very big players that already earned a lot of money, uh, have, have quite a, a strong societal position, also connections to politicians.